Howdy, I'm Bill Verbate, Tech Service Manager with FMC, and today we're out in a herbicide plot in Northern Illinois. This plot compares the active ingredients in Authority Edge and Authority Supreme to a number of industry standards in the same modes of action. So this first plot had four ounces of Anthem Max put out approximately three weeks ago, and the primary residual ingredient in that is peroxisulfone. Looking from the edge, it looks pretty clean, but let's walk the plot a little more closely. So I saw one lamb's quarter, one possible palmer amaranth, and maybe one grass plant. So pretty darn clean three weeks out. This next plot had a pint of dual put out, so that's esmetolacore. Let's take a close look at it. So saw so, uh, probably about eight to ten lamb's quarters. There's a couple of velvet leaf right in front of us here. It's uh, breaking a little bit. This third plot had 10 ounces of Outlook put out about three weeks ago. Not bad from a distance, but let's take a closer look. So pretty good. Half a dozen lamb's quarters, um, velvet leaf, a few more lamb's quarters than the um, peroxisol phone that went out. And finally, for the group 15s, we have Warrant at a quart. You can see it's broken pretty badly, um, even from the edge, but let's take a closer look and look at the species composition. There is considerably more lamb's quarter than any of the other group 15 herbicides. A fair bit of purslane, some of the grass is coming in, some red root pigweed, velvet leaf, uh, possibly a little bit of palmer. Any good herbicide plot is going to have an untreated check, so just to give you an idea of the baseline weed pressure. I'm just going to walk through this one quick. So there are a ton of lamb's quarters, redwood pigweed, purslane, a little bit of grass. So our first plot had six ounces of Spartan put out. Um, Sulfetrazone's the active. Looking really clean off the cuff, but let's get a closer uh, look at it. So, not surprising, there's a tiny bit of grass sneaking through. I saw one broadleaf weed. But overall, for three weeks after planting with a lot of rain this spring, um, the sulfetra zone's looking pretty darn good. So now we're looking at where Valor was put out two and a half ounces, so it's flumioxazin. Again, pretty decent residual off the cuff, but let's take a closer walk down the lane. So, um, similar to the sulfetrazone, there's a little bit of grass poking through. Looked like there was one possible water hemp there. So now we're on to one ounce of Sharpen, or Saflufenicil. So, originally developed more as a corn chemistry, but the one ounce is the bean rate. So, let's take a look at the weed species. I mean, you can see there's a fair bit of them, even from a distance. So uh, a bit more grass, interestingly enough, definitely some water hemp. And um, I think I, there was a pigweed in there as well. I mean, bear in mind, this is meant to be more of a burn down than a residual chemistry. And that's why it's often paired with different partners in a tank mix. And finally, this is a pint of Flexstar. Um, you can see it looks a little better than the Sharpen, but not as good as the Spartan or the Valor. Um, often uh, post chemistry, but there are, it is positioned as kind of a pre or early pre at times, especially in a tank mix. So let's take a look at the species. So you can see there was some velvet leaf, some pigweed, some more purslane. Um, little less grass than the uh, Sharpen, uh, but there's more grass than either the Sulfetrazone or the Flumioxazin. So that wraps up our plot walk this afternoon. Um, FMC does put a lot of their emphasis on Sulfetrazone and Peroxisulfone in terms of our residual chemistries on soybeans, and I hope you can see why in this plot showing um, really good residual control three weeks out. and. Um, We'll keep checking on it throughout the season. <laughs>